Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In my previous video, I talked about how Shelvington was going to grow in size. I shared the new track plan and showed you where it was all going to go in my train room. In this video, I go through building the additional baseboards, which will increase the available space I have to implement the new track layout design. So, I now had the task of transforming this stack of wood into two new baseboards. I took video footage of me doing just that, but I won't bore you with a lengthy build video. Instead, I've turned my hard work into a time lapse, which sees me whizzing around my garage in a much more sprightly manner than occurred in reality. Speeded up footage will also hopefully hide my lack of carpentry skills. I'd already built the small baseboard from Model Railway Solutions, which measured 3 foot by 1 foot and was made from 9mm plywood. So the next job was to make some legs for it. If you watch my original baseboard build video, you'd see that I doubled up 2 by 1 inch battens to construct the legs of 2 by 2 inch. However, I'd now bought some 2 by 2 inch timber so I could skip the doubling up process. I still used 2 by 1 inch battens to brace the legs together though, although that didn't go quite as smoothly as I'd imagined as I made a schoolboy error. The process I went through was much the same as for the original Shelfington baseboard. Each leg was secured to the frame using three screws, with holes being pre-drilled to help prevent the wood from splitting. This time around, I'd also countersink each hole manually, rather than rely on the screw to do the job for me. After having to swap drill bit and driver bit countless times in my previous baseboard build, I'd invested in a set of quick-release drill and driver bits, along with a quick-release chuck adapter for my drill. This turned out to be a bad decision as one of the drill bits broke almost immediately and the quick release adapter kept disengaging from my drill chuck and by disengaging I mean completely falling out. So I ended up having to swap the drills and drivers manually again which is a real pain in the posterior. Once the legs were fastened to the frame I managed to make that schoolboy error I mentioned earlier while bracing them. The brace lengths for the left and right hand side set of legs were slightly different and despite marking them after cutting them I got them mixed up. I then proceeded to force the brace into position and glued it into place. This had the effect of splaying the legs so that they were about an inch too far apart. I managed to remedy the situation by unscrewing one of the legs, pushing it back into position and relying on the plain the plywood framework. And then by holding it with a strong clamp I persuaded it back into alignment with, well, a hammer. I then fitted a correctly sized brace before screwing the leg back into the frame and thus avoided disaster. In a perfect world this wouldn't have happened as the left and right hand side braces would have been the same length. However, as we all know it's not a perfect world and small alignment errors during construction meant the spaces that should have been equal in size were a millimetre or so different. That's why I find it's best to measure and cut your timber as you go along so you can account for any slight deviation in sizes. This may not be your approach, but it works for a rank amateur like myself. Anyway, back to bracing. I didn't apply a brace between the left and right hand side legs this time because this baseboard will eventually be attached to the Shelfington baseboard which should give it ample stability. And to be honest, the whole three foot baseboard structure was plenty stable enough as it was. Fitting a brace across the back would also have got in the way of storage space I intended to have below the layout, so it was best to leave off anyway. So, was the baseboard still level after I'd fitted the bracing? Well, of course it was. I was on a roll with minor miracles when it came to carpentry, wasn't I? Next, I turned my attention to the bigger baseboard, also from Model Railway Solutions, which measured 6 foot by 2 foot 6 and was also made of birch ply that was 9mm thick. All of the below baseboard framework had come pre-drilled, so it should have been a simple task to glue and pin the framework together with a supplied PVA glue and panel pins. However, I managed to bend so many panel pins it became a bit of a war of attrition between me and the baseboard, and it's just as well you can't hear the original audio as there were many many expletives uttered during its construction. However, I finally got everything glued and pinned and went away to let the glue dry. 
Unfortunately, when it came to filming fixing the top piece of plywood to the frame, my camera phone ran out of memory, and I didn't realise. So it didn't record more than the first five seconds of the process. However, attaching the baseboard top to the frame was a very easy task, as there were pre-drilled and countersunk holes making the alignment easy. The whole thing wasn't perfectly square, but it wasn't far off, and I made sure that the right hand edge was flush to the framework, as this was where I would butt it up against the other two baseboards. All that was left to do was to make the legs and brace it. That will come in another video though, as I haven't got round to doing that yet. Ok, so that's about it for this update. If you've got any hints, tips, useful tools or techniques to pass on to a beginner in Engage Modelling, or if you simply want to say hello, then please do so in the comments section. Anything and everything you've got to say will be greatly appreciated. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another update for you soon. Bye.